And Merry Vlogmas to all of you, my friends. Welcome to Vlogmas 2023. We have some fun stuff planned for this month. So come on in and let's take a look at some stuff. Fun, fun, fun. So uh, every day we're going to be opening up one of our yarn advent packages. So this is the Bird Street yarn over in the UK. And they do a yarn advent every year. This is specifically autumn themed, which I thought would be interesting. I still haven't done a yarn advent that actually was Christmas themed, so um, I would like to do that at some point, but I seem to be picking everything that's not Christmas themed. So we'll have that to open every day. And we also have our usual tea shop, English tea shop calendar to open. It's the same teas as last time, but I'll pick a different yeah, I'll pick a different way to um, organize it because we have three different ways that we can organize these. And then I also sprung for a Harry Potter hot chocolate calendar. So both of these calendars come from World Market and we'll watch some shop with me footage today of my sister and I going to World Market to look for our advent calendars. So this one is 12 days of hot chocolate. Um, Harry Potter and it comes with a little wand that you can stir your hot chocolate with and it changes colors when stirred so I don't know what that means I guess we'll find out together uh, sounds very magic so we'll be doing those again I've got my Christmas scarf to finish here and then we're taking all of this leftover yarn I've got like tons of leftover yarn from that Christmas blanket kit I did last year. And we're gonna make some Christmas baubles. So I looked up a few crochet videos, tutorials on YouTube, and I'll link those below. But basically we're gonna take our Christmas yarn and put them around these baubles. So these are just empty plastic baubles that you can fill with glitter or we can crochet around. So I'm gonna try those as presents for this year. And I got those at Michael's. So right now those are on discount at Michael's if you're interested in joining along for that. Still time to make those. And we'll be decorating the house this week. That'll probably be in the next video. Uh, and we'll also be making a bag. So in the spirit of Christmas, we are gonna be making a present this week. So one of the contenders for our giveaway bag was this drawstring squishy bag with the, um, with the patchwork. Well, my sister's very glad that this did not win because she was not eligible, being a family member, for the giveaway. And this is the one that specifically has the cow fabric. So my sister's very into cows. So I'm going to make this one for her. She is also a crocheter, and I don't know how I haven't made her a project bag up to this point because I make project bags, so it's kind of weird that I never thought to make her a project bag. So we've got all of our little minis that we are going to sew together in a patchwork. So we'll lay that out. We probably won't finish this in this video since we're doing more videos in a week. We'll probably finish this up in the next video or two. Uh, and then I've got several other bag patterns lined up that we need to try and finish by the end of the year. That's just my own personal goal. It's not like a set rule of thumb. So we'll try that out and get some good stuff done this month. Lots of cozy content for you, and I hope you come along for the journey. And I just want to thank you all for coming here and spending time with me each week. Your attention and time are the greatest gift that you can give me, so thank you very much. 
So I know that we call this Vlogmas in the YouTube world, this whole idea of filming every day in December, but I don't want to leave anybody out. I don't want to, anybody to feel excluded. So I do acknowledge that there are plenty of other holidays being celebrated in the month of December. Uh, what I celebrate is more of a secular Christmas, more of the traditions that were handed down from my family, so it's not going to be ultra-religious or anything. Uh, so I'm hoping that you will feel included and just can appreciate the cozy content to come and, and be part of our community during this month. Just want you to know that you are appreciated and thought of lovingly no matter what holiday you celebrate. <laughs> So go ahead and grab your coziest mug, fill it with something special, and let's get this party started. Making our Christmas memories. I've been working so much lately. I can barely find the time to sleep. Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you These are the good times with you Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me Christmas memories, oh, and I've been longing to hold you close, forget about everything else, isn't this how it's supposed to be, making our Christmas memories, oh, oh, la da da oh, oh, la da 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 oh, oh, la da 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 making our Christmas memories. my house with Christmas lights so you should come back home to me and when we wake up in the morning I'm gonna play those carols that you love we'll be singing all the melodies until the sun comes up these are the good times with you baby this year is just gonna be you and me our three by seven panels for the front and the back. I'm just kind of making sure that nothing is glaringly obviously clashing. I've got a nice distribution of colors and patterns. Um, I don't have too many things going on around here. Oh, I don't want to do those touching. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of interesting. I don't want to have. I don't want to have any of the two patterns touching, even if they're different colors. You know, a little bit of this outside edge is going to be incorporated into the seam, so we don't want to go too far here. Um, as long as I have like the ones I really like should be in the middle, so I have to think about that. 
So I might want to rearrange this. I really like these monkey heart guys. But then I got lots of green in the same area. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I think we'll stick with that. And then there's a creative way to sew these together that I saw, I think, on the last Homely House. I can't remember. Um, basically, we're going to chain piece these together, or one, two, three, one, two, three. But we're going to keep the strings on so that they're easy to match up. And then once you sew one way, we can sew all the way down. I think that was it yeah you just sew all the way down so by keeping by keeping it the string in between your yeah, string by keeping the thread in between each one um, it helps us line all of these up and keep them in the order that we want them in so I can't remember if I'm supposed to go this way it would make more sense to do one two three flip one two three flip 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 okay so basically what I'm gonna do now is just stack them up in the order I'm going to sew them. And then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, for the quilting part of this, I like to use my Orofil plain white, colors 2311 and it's 30, 30 weight. So I'm gonna use that for this one. I just oiled and blew out my machine since we were doing so much stuff the other week. So all nice and clean and ready to go for this project. Okay, so what we're gonna do, like we talked about, is we're gonna so these first two together, and then we're gonna sew the next two together, so we're gonna kinda go down the rows. These are really easy to line up because they've got the little swivels, and I am gonna keep it on the edge of my, edge of my foot, which is a scant quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna do it that way. I should do, should do a little thread bunny. So I have little scraps that I like to use as thread bunnies. So let's get a little scrap piece here that we can use. So basically what a thread bunny is, is you put it before and after to catch all the loose threads so that all those little jumbles aren't in your project. So we start sewing on that. And then by the time this goes through, we've got a nice clean edge. And then we're just going to leave this one under as we go to this next pile. The trick with these is that you really, really want to make them straight. You want to make these as straight and even as you can because that's going to pay dividends later. We're just going to keep our three piles over here. Put the next two together. Just get that as even as possible. So you'll see we have all three and they're tied together, which is good because we don't want to keep we you know we want to keep this order as we have it so then what you would do is press that open on opposite sides and we will do that later these pieces are so small we don't really have to do that as we go we can do that later so then we're going to add the next piece but we're kind of adding it on this end if that makes any sense so this just kind of helps us keep the pieces in the order that we want them in. Okay, now that we have 
have all of our pieces sewn together in this fashion. What I'm going to do is take it to the iron. I'm going to press these one direction, these the other direction, and these the other direction. So we just kind of make a little flip-flop so that when we sew the next part, we're nesting our seams nice, nicely. Okay, now that we have those all pressed in opposite directions, we are going to take them, pull them up. They're still connected, so it's kind of clever. And then we're just going to nest these seams. So what we can do is we can use some clips at this point just to make sure it's all even and I'm just gonna make sure when I get to each of these little seam points if you can see that with the light behind it <laughs> cover up the light all of these little seam points we're gonna make sure that these seams are matching so that's probably the place where it can get the messiest so if you have pins or clips now's the time to use them So the more time you take to make sure this is correct at this stage, the better everything will look in the end because problems just compound from here if it's off. One little guy, we're going to iron this and then we're going to do the other one. Okay, I can probably show you better here. So I'm going to line these up and you're just going to kind of push these seams into each other. If that makes sense. Push, push, push. And then they're nicely nested up against each other. Okay, we have all of our pieces ready to go. We've got our lining. We've got our pocket. I made the lining part of the pocket a little bit taller so that it'll flip over and kind of create a little border there. We've got our drawstring channels, which are the same size as our bag bottoms. So next thing we're gonna do is put these two pieces together for to make our uh, bag exterior. So we'll put these pieces together. Ugh, I managed to sew one upside down. Uh, um, I can't remember how I had it. I think I had it the other way. Question is, what do these look like together? I think that's good, okay. So we're going to sew these together and then we're going to cut out the fleece to go with that. We don't want to overlap too much on one. We don't want to cut too much off. So I'm going to kind of center it there so that we're not cutting too much off. You'll see that these two hang over a lot more. How about we sew it from this side then so we can really see what's going on. Okay, so there's two ways we can go here, actually, many ways we can go here. If we're master free hand quilters, we could do whatever pattern we wanted. If we had a panto quilting machine, we could do whatever pattern we wanted. We could do diagonal lines. I'm going to stitch in the ditch, which means I'm going to go a quarter of an inch on either side of each of these seams to make a nice little pattern. Now, the question is, do we just follow that all the way down and do the same thing down here? Or is that going to look funny? Now, I tend to just stay up here. I will do a top stitch where these two fold over because I would have done that anyway. But I'm really just going to stick with my stitches here. Only problem with that being that I have to start and stop down here. <laughs> so what I might do is start and stop you know, go around the corner, start and stop. So these these ones will be easy because these are all the way across. It's just the ones that have to stop here that are going to be an issue. So let's go do that. And then I love putting together project bags, people. Um, I just wish more people would buy project bags. I just have to find I have to find the the knitters and crocheters out there <laughs> so that I can make more project bags. Okay, I'm going to start with the light blue that's already in the machine. 
because I'm going to do the rest in white. So I'm just going to do a line of stitching, top stitching here. I'm going to switch back to the white Orofill. I did find a coin purse pattern that I liked that we're going to try. So I might go ahead, I'm going to have enough extra fabric of the interior. We might just go ahead and do, um, do a little coin purse for my sister to experiment. Okay, so we're going to go down one side and up the other side. So we're going to start off the edge. Now the eighth of an inch for me lands right in the center of my other toe over here. So I just keep that toe in the center and then we have nice stitching on either side and we just have a little join there. What I can also do at the end is do a complete line of stitching across to hide that. That would be a good way to kind of cover that up after we're done stitching. So if I can manage to stop in the same place every time, then that will look nice. Et voila! All quilted together. Very cute. We'll do the other panel. Okay, so we're going to do our usual sewing the pocket down. And I believe my sister would want two pockets instead of three. I'm not sure. But that way she can reach in and grab things easier. And we're also going to make a little um, progress keeper holder. So I'm going to use those same, um, those same thin swivel clasps that I'm going to use for the coin purses. I believe I got those on Amazon. And I'm going to use those with this. So I'm going to make myself a little connector piece. I didn't measure this. I just used a scrap piece of fabric. So it's probably way longer than we need it. But basically what we're going to do is put this on here. Is the other side prettier? fold it in half and then we're gonna tuck this on one side of our pocket so when we sew our pocket down we're gonna tuck it in like that you can see that there and it's gonna stick up right here have a nice little extra touch to our bag. So you can put your stitch markers on there, your progress keepers, whatever you want. We are going to box the corners later, that's why um, I've put this up so far. Get to the wand. What the heck? How are you supposed to get this thing out? Um, I guess I have to destroy the box to get this stupid wand out. What the hell? Oh no, it's going in the box. Oh. Okay, 
so we have our first hot chocolate, which looks yellow. I'll show you a clip of that. I thought it was supposed to change colors. And this wand was like impossible to get out of the out of the thing. So I'm gonna stir it up again, make sure it's mixed. It's yellow, so I'm hoping it's butterbeer flavor because otherwise yellow hot chocolate seems kind of weird. Doesn't really taste like taste like chocolate at all. Unless it is butterbeer. This is kind of weird. Okay, well, <laughs> that was an interesting experiment. There's only 12 of these, so I'll, I'll try a couple more. But we might just stick with the teas, because the teas are cute because they have the number on them, and it's a whole thing we did last year. And that was fun, so I might just switch back to the teas. So we've got our advent calendar, which is actually autumn themed. They just sent us the patterns, so there's a crochet blanket pattern that goes along with this. And they very nicely put it in, um, in black and white so that they didn't spoil the surprise of all the colors, which is really cool. So this is the Bird Street Yarn Advent, and it's I Wish Autumn Was Every Day. Let's take a look. <laughs> We're starting with the chocolatey brown, so that's very interesting. Uh, it's very soft, very soft. So, yeah, I'm gonna just gonna make a pile of these like I did last year in our little clear, clear container, and <laughs> see what they look like. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna make a blanket. It's 36 inches square, the pattern that they gave us. Um, I might mix in that lav the light lavender yarn and kind of make a, a bigger blanket with it. My sister just made a really pretty blanket. I'll have to ask her what stitch she used because that would be very nice for a blanket for the couch for autumn. It would be nice to have a blanket. Um, otherwise, what I was thinking of doing was making a garland. If you've seen those, the leaves and mushrooms and squirrels and all the little autumny shapes for a garland for autumn. I do kind of have an autumn leaf garland, but I don't have anything in yarn. So that would be very good. Okay, and that concludes the first episode of Vlogmas. Thank you for joining me. I love doing Vlogmas. Um, I love sharing my holiday traditions with you. And I love seeing everybody else's cozy content all, all, all month. So the next video is probably gonna come out on Tuesday or Wednesday. And we're going to be decorating the house, finishing the rest of the bag, and then moving on to, might do another video next week, like Thursday, so maybe Tuesday, Thursday. And then we're going to be decorating the Christmas tree and picking that out and everything. And then next Saturday, we'll be back to another bag, but we'll probably split up the bag into several episodes, just like we did with this one. So thank you for joining me this week. I hope that Vlogmas brings you joy as it does me. And I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. See you next week. Love you, friends. Bye. Well, I'm all for Christmas. All the happy smiles and the wishes. And I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe Tell me one thing Is there anything that you're missing? I will keep you warm as soon as you